So when we think about the systems, you know, there's a lot of different systems that I think we want to talk about today. Healthcare is one of them. Our financial system is another one of them. Um, I want to talk about those as it relates to how we think we got to a place where we have this insidious corruption. And I also want to just understand, like, do you guys think that we're in this place where we have money as the ultimate because we're hypnotized, because we inherently feel unsafe and that is our understanding of what security is. Like, why do you guys think that we're so obsessed and worship money in the way that we do? I think like initially what comes to mind is that like our identity is so wrapped up in money where like it is the accepted literal currency, but also currency of like, here's what I do here is how successful I am and here is how I can prove it. Um, And so I think it's really hard for people to let go of that part of their identity or not make it a priority or the thing that they are working for because Mm -hmm. I think people need like that tangible, very uh, immediate validation Mm -hmm. of this is what I do in the world and this is kind of the proof that I'm doing well in the world. Like a perceived purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I feel like we've all, you know, had this experience with money Mm -hmm. where like, I remember being in my 20s and being like so broke at times Mm -hmm. and feeling so low, so sad, so unworthy of so many things, not just money. And I was always confused by that feeling because I'm like, wait, why? Mm -hmm. You know, it had Mm -hmm. such a hold on me and such a chokehold. But I think people love to identify with something. And I feel like money is just a really Mm -hmm. easy and common way to do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I really think money, as we see it on planet Earth, operating is a direct manifestation of our belief in lack. That there's a limited supply of resources to go around. And so you get this wacky concept called debt, where somehow in an infinite universe of unending abundance, I can be in debt to you. You can be in debt to me. You owe me. Owe me what? Everything's infinite and abundant. There's no lack of resources anywhere. So in in the law of one, in natural law, you can't be in debt. Debt is inherently scarcity consciousness, right? Mm. And money becomes, as soon as we think we're an ego, a separate self, money becomes one of the first things that will evolve out of that because lack, scarcity. There's a limited amount. We got to make that that amount that's limited in a physical form that I can possess for myself. And so you get the I am what I have identity. If I'm only as good as my bank account or the assets I own. And okay, so from that level of consciousness, you can see why everything turns into a for-profit system that corrupts everything because everyone thinks money is the most important thing in the world and that there's a limited amount of it and we're all fighting each other for it. So of course you get these competing corporate systems that develop monopolies and eventually control all these systems. It's like ego consciousness is a black hole that has no ending to it. It always wants more. It's always absorbing into itself and it will never be satisfied. It, you'll never get enough money Right. Look at these these families, yeah. the Rothschilds and Rockefellers. They've had they're probably trillionaires yeah. Yeah. and all that they're doing with every waking second of their life is how do I control more? Mm-hmm. It's like you, you're not good yet, bro. Really? Like, so I think all maybe you need a hug or mm-hmm. something with like Kardashians. <laughs> when is it that? enough? Yeah. With like the Kardashians. I'm like, guys, stop. Do we need Kardashian closet? Exactly. Because, <laughs> literally, like when they post I'm, their, they I post know, their I'm stuff like, on like Poshmark. Pardon me? It's called Kardashian closet. They like post their like clothes <laughs> to sell. I'm like, I'm like, donate them. Yo. Guys, you don't need to make like yeah. a quick money selling. I'm like, I guess you're recycling. I don't even know. But yeah, it's like, do you think that is, so our inherent belief in, belief in lack and people's identification with um, who they, what they do or how much money they have is their purpose. I guess like I'm just trying to go back even further. Like, do we mm-hmm. feel like from a cellular level, we've just been injected in the belief that we are lacking or like, when did this happen? Because if we think back in history, was there such an obsession with money or was it more with power or what was like, when did the transition happen where now we're more in like the material world? Like mm-hmm. material is God, money is God, wealth is number mm-hmm. one. 
rather than in the past in history. It was probably more about power, land ownership, or some things that might might have looked a little different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, like in Native American cultures, they don't understand what owning means. It's like a weird concept to them. Like, how could you own the spirit of creation? You know, land. You How do you own land? It's already God's. So even owning is, in that sense, mm. a separate self concept that only arises from ego. In terms of history, I'm not exactly sure when like money as a yeah. tangible currency developed. I know that we used to be in a barter and trade system. Mm-hmm. And really just because as humanity evolves, we need more efficient systems to do things, right? So if I sell apples or whatever, it's not super convenient for me to have to always carry around my apples to barter and trade if I need fish or bread or whatever. Mm. And likewise for everyone else. And so at some point, maybe it was the Romans, I don't know, probably way before that, Someone developed the idea that let's all agree on something that has inherent value, which is always precious metals, gold and silver. Let's make little tiny amounts of it that we can all possess and then we can trade those instead of our fish and our bread and our apples. So it's more convenient. But then even that outlived itself after a while because there's only so many bars of gold you can carry around with you. And it's pretty risky to carry gold around because you can get robbed, right? And have all your... your inheritance stolen from you in a, in a second. So even the idea of carrying around gold and silver became a problem at a certain point. And so then we had to get one more step removed from reality, which is, okay, let's now make these gold and silver coins into paper IOUs. And then you can just carry around the paper, which is super light. You can carry a lot of it. You can travel from far lands and not have to haul you know, 500 pounds of gold with you to take all your assets with you. And then we'll put the Illuminati triangle on it. <laughs> and then we'll stick the Illuminati triangle on it and they'll own the world. And the end, that's how it happened. Yeah, exactly. That's a fast forwarded version though yes, of how it actually it happened. So that's when banks mm, were introduced yeah. and banks is when the monetary system are all around the planet became very corrupt very quickly. Because let's think about it. Let's pretend you and I just came up with the first idea of a bank, which is again, hey, You guys are having issues transporting your gold and silver all around and it's really heavy and inconvenient. I'll hold it for you. Well, we have safes in here behind vaults. We'll keep your money safe and we'll give you paper IOUs that represent how much gold you have here. And anytime you want, you can come exchange a paper for a piece of gold. And all we're gonna do is just charge you a little percentage off what you're storing so that we make a little money for the work we're doing, right? All fair so far, sign the contract, let's do it. And then you and I are like, hey, we got all this gold in here. Like we could probably use it to like, you know, barter and trade in the back door without, they they don't have to know. We're just gonna accumulate more gold. So it's good for everybody. But like, we'll use all this gold to start profiting behind closed doors. Mm. And so then it was like, let's lend the gold out and then charge interest on those loans. And then it was, let's lend out gold we don't actually have this is called fractional reserve lending which is the current system we have where like everybody thinks a bank is a place where they keep your money for you and it couldn't be further from the truth banks have no money at all they have they have no credit or collateral of their own when you deposit your money in a bank they consider it and of course they don't tell you this but they consider it a loan you're loaning us your money so we can do whatever we want with it you loaned it to us so they go and they they buy and trade bonds with it on the bond market. They make all kinds of money off of your money because they don't have any money themselves. And so they use your money to generate it for themselves without telling you about it. And so their rule is, as long as we're only loaning um, uh, 10% of the money we actually have, then we're good. Like at least as long as everyone doesn't run to the bank at the same time and say, give us our money, we'll never have an issue with that. And so that's what happened in the ancient world where banks started doing this stuff where they would um, they would write out way more IOU notes, which we call paper money, mm-hmm. than they actually had gold in their safes, right? And so at a certain point, if there was an economic downturn, people get a little nervous about where their gold is. So they say, hey, I'm going to take my gold out now. Here's all my IOU notes. And like 100 people do that at once. The bank has to admit that they've been um, bad actors, with the money they've been given. And they say, um, we don't have your guys' gold in here. We don't have any gold to give you. We traded it on the bond market. And so then you have 
people overthrowing banks in the ancient world and they would literally hang these people in the public square because it's seen as like the most the bankers yeah wow the most dishonorable thing you can do to a man is to lie and steal his money and his inheritance from him mm. so it's like punishment by death right so banks had to learn how to get more and more crafty and clever with the way they did things and so now we we have this world today where bankers and banks own the entire world the the banks own our government because our government is insolvent and bankrupt to the banks right so technically everything we see like the biden administration doing it's all the banks doing that thing but they're just casting the orders behind the curtain you need to say this we're going to war with these people they're running the whole country because the the u.s government is their debtor Right? They're in debt to the banks. When someone's your debtor, they're your slave. They do whatever you say. Wow. Because it's like trillions of dollars in debt. Yes. Aren't yeah. we? Yeah. Yeah. 30, it's 36 trillion. And then the bank is owned, the Federal Reserve is owned by? The Federal Reserve is owned by the IMF, which is a European British organization. So, and this gets into the whole thing we won't go into because it's, it's an entire podcast, but the United States is actually a British colony. We're owned by Britain, owned by the crown. We're not actually a sovereign, independent nation. We've been totally lied to about that in our history books. Britain gave us the illusion of sovereignty after the Revolutionary War. But if the more you study like the IRS, the Federal Reserve, the IMF, everything financial whatsoever always goes back to the crown. And that's because the crown actually owns the United States, but they wanted to give us our dream of independence. And so they said, look, we'll sign these commercial contracts that all your banking systems are run by us, but you can just tell your people you're free or whatever. And so that's what we did. And we told everyone we were free and we sort of are right. Mm -hmm. But, um, there's a contract where we're signed to Europe without you and I knowing this, which is what it's allowing them. It's like a foreign arm in America controlling our whole monetary system. And he who controls the money controls the country, right? Mm -hmm. So we're waking up now to this fact that, uh, let's say the Federal Reserve Bank, the Federal Reserve Bank is not federal at all. They have no affiliation with the federal government. They are not a reserve. They don't have any reserves, as I said. They, and they're not a bank because they're a money printing company. They're a money printing company. They're a private for-profit business that named themselves Federal Reserve Bank because they had tried to do this two pri prior times in American history. And Andrew Jackson was like, I'm on to you guys. And he took the boot to them, man. Like he kicked them out of the country. He overthrew the banks. He was like, we're not letting this slave system happen here because what did they leave Europe for? Taxation without representation. They were just forcing their citizens to pay all these taxes for no reason. Like you guys aren't doing anything for us. We live like slaves in the mud and you tax us. Like this is not fair. And so they couldn't beat the system they were under because it was too powerful. So they all left to another country and that's how America was founded, right? We wanted to get away from this feudal debt slave system that had been controlling Europe for a thousand years. And then it was secretly set up here without us seeing it. By the Masons? Yes, there's a lot of groups. There's the Masons. There is um, the Jesuits is a big one in the in the Vatican and under the crown. I was going to say the Vatican because it will because the crown goes back to the Vatican. Essentially, True? yes. Okay. And so, the, but the Vatican's its own financial system. Yes, the Vatican is not a part of England or um, Rome. Sorry, just like London's not a part of England. It's a sovereign city um, nation state. Mm -hmm. Washington DC is the third one of the three. It's also not part of the United States of America. It's a sovereign nation state yeah. that's owned by the corporation United States. So this is where we get into the for-profit stuff, right? Mm. So Federal Reserve Bank, lie, lie, lie. None of those three things are true. It's a money printing company that did a deal with the government back in the early, I think 1800s or something where they said, hey, you guys have this new government over all these people. Um, let's do a deal where we'll print your money as much money as you want and you'll get into debt to us for printing your money and that's the perfect excuse you'll have to tax your citizens. Taxes go to paying off our debt and we're all Americans so it's all of our debt. So we all should want to pay our debt back and do our civic duty, right? That's the illusion that they sold the American people and of course it's not our debt. 
Like you and I didn't take out any loans from the Federal Reserve. They, they took out like, a, I think it was $21 million loan during the Civil War, I think, and or the Revolutionary War from the banks. Because they're like, hey, we don't have money to pay for all this military equipment and stuff. Um, and soldiers, like, can, can we take a loan out? And they were like, sure, but it's going to be at a high interest rate. And the interest rate was so astronomically high that it was obvious it was a deal that they both parties clearly wanted to get into an eternal debt because it's a, there's a mutual interest there. We'll keep this illusion that we're in debt to you, so we have to pay it back, and then we can tax our citizens. You print our money, we give you the taxes. We're all good. We both win. So this is why paying income tax is something a lot of people are waking up to, like myself, no longer doing so because 100% of your income taxes go to the Federal Reserve, which then goes to the IMF and then to the Crown. 100% of your tax money, federal tax money, goes to elite banking families that are oligarchs around the world that own all the money already. And uh, another rabbit hole we don't have to get into is what they do with that money. Child trafficking, funding wars, drug running. They do the most insidiously corrupt things we know of on this planet with your tax money. So it's one of those questions. Again, once I really know, and you have to see it for yourself, don't take my word for it, go research it. But once you do see that, yeah, all my tax money goes to fund these bankers, who do horrible things to humanity, can I in good conscience continue paying taxes? Mm -hmm. And thankfully, there's very lawful, powerful solutions to unvolunteering from the tax system if that's a road you're feeling called to because taxes are voluntary. Uh, taxes are, you have to actually volunteer to be a taxpayer to then be obligated to pay your taxes. So there is an obligation to pay taxes, but it's only because there's a contractual obligation and that contractual obligation is the topic of the legal fiction, right? The all capitals name that they assign you at birth, yeah. where they make yeah. your name into a corporation mm -hmm. because they're, they're dealing only in the corporate realm. It's all business. So they make a business out of your name at birth. They assign it a dollar value, $5 million, I think, at, is where it starts. And then every time you sign anything, they're, they're taking it that you're, you're signing for the all caps name, the legal fiction, right? So the name on your driver's license, your social, your birth certificate is the first one. If you sign any document where your name is in all caps, you have said, yes, I am the legal fiction, the corporate business, and I give you permission to do this thing. And so, of course, it's, it's fraud, right? It's deception because we see our name and we think it's me, the living man or woman, but it's not. It's, it's a fictional entity, a corporation that they made out of your name at birth. That's what they call it a legal name, right? Yes. Yeah. The word corporation uh, in etymology, mm -hmm. corpse, which is like the dead. Mm -hmm. And then what's oration means? Speak. Mm -hmm. Speak. So corporation literally means the dead speaking or dead speak. Yeah. So like a corporation is a dead entity that doesn't actually exist. Like um, Facebook, Instagram, McDonald's, right? Does Mr. Facebook go to court to testify when, they, when Facebook gets called into court? No. Mark Zuckerberg goes in, right? And he speaks on behalf of Facebook because there is no Mr. Facebook, right? Like the Facebook logo doesn't walk into court and right. start answering all the questions because it's not real. So they made a not real fake entity out of your name that they knew they could trick you into signing uh, the rest of your life. And that's why when it comes to the money conversation, this is such a huge red pill for people, but your signature is what creates money. And you have never borrowed money from anybody. You've never borrowed money from a bank, an institution, a credit card. You've never, ever borrowed money. They've always borrowed your money and then loaned it to you and signed a contract with you that you're going to pay them back for that loan. They just didn't tell you that it was your credit that they took to begin with. The $5 so, million dollars from the legal entity. Yes. It's called your treasury direct account. And it's essentially, a, some people call it the SESTA QV trust. It's a trust fund that is held by the SSA, the Social Security Administration, the IRS, uh, the Treasury. They hold a Treasury direct account that is basically your human labor in a dollar value. So you ask the question, you know, they took off money off the gold standard in 1933. Under the Emergency Banking Relief Act, Roosevelt said, Everyone has to send in their gold to us because we got to pay for this war or whatever. But don't worry, uh, we'll consider you guys debt-free. We'll, we'll remove all your debts for you and stuff. 
So they promised a lot of good things. This is what they always do, right? Promise you some good things in exchange for some of your freedom. So a lot of people, not everyone, but a lot of people turned in their gold to the US treasury. And then the, the dollar was no longer backed on gold anymore. So now there's nothing of value actually backing the dollar, which is where you get into real dangerous territory, right? With money, because then they can just be like someone playing Monopoly who has a Monopoly printing machine in the corner and they're just printing out bills like crazy. Mm, which is what like, doing now. Mm -hmm. No matter how good you are at Monopoly, you're not gonna beat them. They're cheating, right? Yeah. So now they can cheat with money and use it as an enslavement mechanism. If we can somehow pool all this money to a tiny percentage of people that are at the top that are running the show, the elites as we call them, then everyone else will be poor and they'll be in debt to us, the rich people, and so we'll have slavery. And so we, we think the Civil War ended slavery, but it just made slavery commercial. We're all commercial slaves on a commercial plantation in America because the government literally considers all of us debtors. That's why, that's why debt is such a big deal in like um, the credit world, like credit bureaus, you have a uh, TransUnion, Equifax, and um, Experian, the credit reporting agencies. How do you increase your credit score by getting into debt? Oh, but really? The more I debt you have, no. No, because then when you pay off, if the you debt, don't pay your that, debt, that increases your credit score. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they want you to have lots and lots of debt and be a good pay payer. Wow. And be paying it off. If you don't have any debt, you can't have a great credit score because they're like, prove to us you're good with debt. Wow. Yeah. You know, because credit's just debt. They're loaning you wow. your own credit and turning it into a debt. So right. the reason that it's your money is because these very intelligent people before 1933, when they actually rolled out the plan, is they said, what's even more valuable than gold? And the only obvious answer is people, right? You and I are way more valuable than a bar of gold is. Mm -hmm. A bar of gold can't start a business mm -hmm. or take out a loan or make a product or sign a contract or do anything, but a person can. And so the idea became, how do we collateralize human labor from birth and make that what the dollars backed on? Of course, without telling anyone. Yeah. You don't want the slaves to know that they're slaves, right? And so they did that without telling anyone through the 1933 Emergency Banking Relief Act. And from then on, everyone that's born is assigned a treasury direct account, which is your social security number. Got that's it. the routing number. And they give you a dollar value of, let's say, 5 million now. It used to be 1 million in the 70s. And they say, this person's at least going to have about $5 million worth of human labor go through them. You know, every loan you'll ever take out, every contract you'll sign, business, payment, income, all of it goes into that value. So every cent that will go through Krista Williams in her lifetime belongs to us. So that just like the banks who now have everyone's gold yes. in their vaults and they're like, hey, they don't have to know that we're gonna go trade that gold and yes. make money from it. That's why they want mm. to collateralize your human labor and then go trade it on the bond market. So they literally make a, they, they it's called securitizing your birth certificate. Okay your social security card, it all has a financial okay. value to it. And then they go trade that on the okay. bond market. So basically at birth, you're assigned the $5 million to the treasury. They don't tell you about it. Yes. And then behind the scenes, they're basically like selling it on the market or like, yes. they're, or they're assuming, I guess, sorry, with the $5 million that you will do a certain amount of labor in your lifetime. So that basically, because we don't know, it keeps us in a way of debt. How? Bingo. So you are the creditor, not the debtor. And it's a perfect spiritual parallel, right? All the value comes from your own being. Like money is based on your being, right? They saw you come into this world and they said, that's an inherently valuable being. It's worth at least $5 million. As like a contributor to society over a lifetime. Yes, because you're okay. going to produce a ton of value for society. You're going to have a job. Mm -hmm. You're going to work. You're going to make things. You might be an Elon Musk for all we know. Like you've got right. potential right. just because you exist. So there's some spiritual truth to that. But where they corrupt it is they say, let's not tell them about it. Because like they could have been honest and said, hey, we make treasury direct accounts out of all your names. We make your name into a corporation. We assign it a dollar value and then we trade it on the bond market and make millions off of it. They could have told us that and said, we'll split it 50-50. You know, you take half of the funds in the account. We'll use the other half to trade and make money from and we'll both be happy. They absolutely could have done that, right? And that'd be a system we all win under. But 
they said, we're going to not tell you, we're going to take a hundred percent of it. And then we're going to tax you on, you know, 30 to 40% of the little tiny amount of money that you make in your lifetime. We're even going to take a pie, a, a little bit of that out of the pie. So it's just total greed and, and desire for power that again, th this evolved slowly, right? Over like hundreds of years. It wasn't just like some mustache twirling villain thought of this yeah. plot, you know, right. in his lair one night and then exacted it on humanity. It's just like every generation takes that corrupt system the next step further. I want a little bit more money now. And they just keep inching it until we have this megalithic structure that we see today in our country. And we're just at the place of like, all right, we have no choice but to wake up to this giant monster in the room with us and say, how are we going to heal this and bring a positive change to it?